Dr. Royzen, what is the thrifty gene theory about, and are you at a metabolic disadvantage if you have it? Well, the thrifty gene is what happens to you in utero, or your parents, or your grandparents, or someone else, mm -hmm. that change the way you function. What happens is, um, for example, if mm -hmm. you're pregnant, Rena, and I'm not trying to say you are. Okay, I'm not, no. Okay, you know, I, we have a new book coming out, You That's Having right. a Baby. Mm -hmm. And I asked Oprah if she wouldn't try and get pregnant for us so we could <laughs> launch on her no. show. And Categorically. She, and, and she said, I'm, I'll try, mm -hmm. but it ain't going to happen. <laughs> so anyway, but the, uh, but the point is that um, in utero, your child, your baby, um, predicts the future. So okay. if you didn't give them enough nourishment, there was a famine, for example, mm -hmm. they would predict that there was always going to be a famine. Oh. And so they would methylate or acetylate certain of their genes. Mm -hmm. And those genes were ones that shut down your metabolic rate when you okay. didn't get food for a little bit of time. So the baby predicted that. Those methylation and acetylations stay with that family forever. That's part of the gene pool from then on for that family. So it was a prediction of what the environment was going to be like on the outside. Which means there would not be enough. There would not be enough food. They were going to be in a, in a famine mode. So they would shut down their metabolic rate okay. so they could survive a famine without causing great damage to them. So it, what it is is we change genes over 30,000 years, meaning mm -hmm. long periods of time. But we change expression of genes, mm -hmm. whether they're on or not, what we call epigenetics, very quickly during okay. a pregnancy. Okay. But those epigenetic changes stay with your kids and your grandkids and their grandkids, ah. et cetera. And that's how we are able to adapt to famines and other things relatively quickly. It actually comes through the pregnancy prediction by the child. Well, about someplace around 60% of Americans have a thrifty gene passed on through one generation or okay. another. Okay. And so when you're, um, so you're at a, at a disadvantage compared to the other 40%, but it's nothing you can't control. Because all it hear, means yeah. is says, when you don't get food for eight or 12 hours, you shut down your genotype mm -hmm. or you tend to store fat. Well, that's a good thing if you're in a, in in a, a famine. famine. We don't have many famines now in America. <laughs> no, that's the good news. Um, and so those of us who overeat and then say, I'm going to skip breakfast, right? Mm -hmm. Wrong. Because when you skip breakfast, mm -hmm. you go into a famine mode. The, okay. That gene turns on and it says, heck, no more calories consumed or weight cut down. So you then don't burn your normal calories. And it takes a while. It's like a factory turning on and off. Your gene turns on and it takes a while for it to turn off again. So that preserves, if you will, body fat, so you preserve it. So that's the theory of a that's thrifty the gene genotype. So if there were a real famine, 60% of us would do well. <laughs> well, it depends how good we were at storing food and, and shopping. You know, it's another subject you're getting into, okay, which we'll is there, how but... well are Americans prepared for emergencies? So when I lived in California, we used to have earthquake preparedness where my wife and I would turn off the gas and turn off the thing and see if we can survive a week. Mm -hmm. Well, we only tried to survive a weekend without, <laughs> without you know, okay. gas, electricity, and without exogenous mm -hmm. uh, food, what, what we had stored. And we aren't very well prepared to survive. Oh, okay. um, as, Amer as Californians, where the earthquake zone is, is toughest, it's only something like 15% of them know mm -hmm. how to survive three days without gas and electricity okay. and uh, extra food. So it's not really as big an advantage as it might seem. Well, you know, it, 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 we don't In know. In a famine. <laughs> we don't know. Um, hopefully, we won't have to survive a famine to find out the answer to your question. Right now, we have to survive glut, right? Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Royzen. Thank you, Rena.